In this video, we're going to learn about appendicular skeleton of frog. In our previous video, we have learned about axial skeleton which includes skull and vertebral column. And now, we'll be studying about appendicular skeleton in frog. As you can see in the presentation, appendicular skeleton in frog comprises of pectoral girdle, pelvic girdle and bones of hind limb and forelimbs. And here in this part, we'll be studying about the girdles, which are pectoral and pelvic. And our learning objective of this particular session is to know about different bonds of these two girdles and also to know the function. Moving on to pectoral girdle, as you can see here, pectoral girdle is found in the thoracic region or shoulder region, which provides mus attachment for muscles and bonds of the forelimb. And most of the higher organisms, the pectoral girdle has a part known as sternum and the sternum has got a ribs. But in the case of frog, the sternum does not have any ribs. So the girdle itself is giving protection to the internal organs from the ventral side and if you look at the structure of this girdle, you can see it is in the form of an inverted arch. So this is an arch-like structure in the inverted form. And this is free dorsally and this is fused to the sternum ventrally. So there is a mid-ventral sternum to which the girdles are attached ventrally. And this in turn is giving protection to the internal organs like lungs and heart of this frog. And the sternum does not have any ribs. And coming into the uh, diagram of this pectoral girdle, you can divide the pectoral girdle into a scapular region here and a coracoid region here. In the scapular region, you can see two bonds. One is a suprascapula, this part, and second is a scapula. And in the picture, you can see that, sorry, and in the picture, I'll point it. You can see that this region is a suprascapula. Up to here, I can say this is suprascapula. And the remaining portion of this much is the scapula. And the suprascapula is, majority of the suprascapula to the anterior region is made up of cartilage. And to the posterior region of the suprascapula is mainly ossified or bony. And coming to the scapular region, it's a bone, it's completely ossified, it's a bone and it is flat or it is brought to both its end and it's a little bit constricted towards the center. And the posterior part of the scapula, you can see a cup-like depression, you can see a cup-like depression here and we call this cavity as a glenoid cavity and to this cavity, head of the humerus attaches. So in this picture, this can you can see here, this is a glenoid cavity found in the posterior region of the scapula and to here, your uh, humerus head will be attached. Coming to the inner portion, you can see two other bonds, a coracoid bond which is in the form of a dumbbell shape. A dumbbell, as I said, it has two ends which is broader and it is constricted in the middle and we call it as a coracoid bond and the two coracoid bonds of two sides are attached in the center or midventrally by a piece of cartilage and we call it as epicoracoid and if you look above the coracoid bond you can see a slender bond we call it as clavicle and this clavicle is a slender bond found above the coracoid bone and just below the cavicle you can see a small strip here and that we call it as a pre-coracoid cartilage. So just below the clavicle there is a small thin strip of cartilage known as pre-coracoid cartilage and separating coracoid and clavicle you can see a space and that space is known as foramen. Uh, this foramen is known as uh, coracoid foramen and 
looking into the sternum this middle part is a sternum it also has four different components one is episternum followed by omosternum then you have mesosternum and sternum. so four parts episternum omosternum mesosternum sternum. and here you can see episternum and sternum are made up of cartilage and meso and omosternum are bony so this is about the pectoral girdle and in this picture you cannot actually see epi and uh, omosternum but meso and sternum is present and this is a structure mm -hmm. with suprascapula scapula and this is a clavicle this is a coracoid region and this opening is the uh, coracoid foramen and this cavity is a glenoid cavity to which humerus fits in and this region is the sternum and next moving on to pelvic girdle which is found in the hip region you can see that pelvic girdle has direct connection with the vertebral column and this is actually in the form of a V, the V shape and pelvic girdle, the two ends of the V attaches to the transverse process of the ninth vertebra. When I said ninth vertebra, we show that it has largely uh, stout transverse process and those transverse process come and rest or come and attaches to these two ends. It is being given face it for the ninth vertebra. It attaches here and the tenth vertebra or the urostyle, it gets attached to this articular surface or this area. And in the diagram, it is given as articular surface for urostyle. So this is the portion where the urostyle is going to attach and these are the two articular surfaces for the transverse process of ninth vertebra. And you can see that this v-shaped pelvic girdle is composed of two similar halves and each half is known as an os innominatum and this is a structure of one os innominatum wherein you can see a disc like structure and a ridge like structure and this disc is made up of three bonds namely ilium ischium and pubis so these three together form a disc and you can see here the majority of the disc and the crest is formed by ilium then another portion of the disc is formed by ischium and a small portion a triangular portion is formed by a cartilaginous bond known as pubis and these three bonds together form a cup like cavity so here you can see a cup like cavity just like the glenoid cavity you can see another cavity on the pelvic girdle and we call this cavity as acetabulum wherein the head of the thigh bone or femur gets articulated. So this is acetabulum cavity to which femur, femur's head articulates. Once again I am telling you one os innominatum has majority it is made up of ilium so you can see this much portion with iliatic crust so this is a major ilium then comes in ischium so this part is ischium and a small triangular cartilaginous bond pubis and these two together fuse again midventrally and when the ilium fuses we call it as ischiatic sorry iliatic symphysis and when ischium combines we call it as ischiatic symphysis that point of jaw union so this is about pelvic girdle